All right, first and foremost, I give all honor, praise, and glory to the Most High, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah, and I give double honor to the elders. All right, so the topic at hand is the so-called Star of David, where people presume to be a star, what people say is a star, right? And scientifically, when you look it up, I found it very interesting. I think it's a, uh, but now I, said, I could be wrong, but let me start. Uh, no, near, yeah, it's by near, na it's by the National Geographic uh, page, which a lot of people believe. Um, says a star is a is basically a ball of gas, a gigantic ball of gas right here. That's what most scientists say that a star is not a you know star as people call the star of David. They call that a star. And another interesting image I found was with the Catholic Church, right? Um, because people say that the you know, quote unquote, the so-called star of David is the star of Moloch, right? And the Catholic Church, they have this image of the statue of Moloch with their wicked selves, man. And if you look at the hand, I mean, you don't see the star of David. You see some type of symbol with this all-seeing R, but that doesn't look like the so-called star of David. And on his hands, you have a, you have stars, which are a ball of gas, right? And see, this is the plant. This is what the Edomites do, what they did when they, uh, when you go into the scripture where it talks about them repainting the judges and taking the images and all that. When you go into, um, what is it? Wisdom of Solomon, verse 4 and 12, right? It says, For the bewitching of naughtiness, do for stirred things that are honest, right? And the wondering of conspicuous, do if undermine the simple mind. So basically, they take innocent things, right? They're not evil and turn it into something else. Um, one of those you can see throughout the uh, the Nazi period, right? During the Second World War with Hitler. Um, basically, let me show you. So this is a, um, a Indian swastika, right? It was supposed to be something pure or something, you know, I guess they call it, they call it holy. Uh, the meaning of the symbol, we dive into it. Let me see. Center. Yeah, right here. The swastika is a holy symbol, right? And Hindu, uh, in the Hindu religion, in Buddhist sculptures. And what Hitler did is he took this symbol, right, and it became something else. It became the Nazi symbol, right? The red flag uh, has to do with the blood, they say, and that the white image of the um, the Nazi symbol has to do with purity. That's what they say. Another thing with the rainbow. Um, the LGBTQ movement, as they call it, or the pride movement with, you know, homosexuals, they took the rainbow, right, and turned that into a, the face of their movement. So now when you see a rainbow, you know, you think something, they're gay, right? But when you go back to the book of Genesis, the rainbow was a covenant the most high would not, you know, end the world in flooding and drowning. Again, because the rainbow is actually a pretty beautiful symbol, but when you see it, you know, you think something else now. So that, that's going into that, dealing with innocent things being twisted into something else. Um, let me let me dive into the, so, so we have the honeycomb and we have snowflakes and pomegranates, right? And the snowflake, which the so-called star of David heavily resembles, right? The honeycomb, the middle of the star, or I'm just gonna refer to it as the star for right now and then switch over to the lily. But when you look at honeycombs, right? The middle of it, it looks like the so-called Star of David. You see the points? You, and then you have you have the pomegranate. The top of the pomegranate looks like a so-called Star of David, right? And you have a snowflake. Looks like a so-called Star of David. So basically, when you get into that, Genesis, uh, let me see, Genesis 31. Let me see if I got that pulled. So you got Genesis 1 and 31, right? And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. In the evening, in the morning, with the sixth day. So the Most High, everything he created, he, that he made during that day was good. And snowflakes he created, the lily he created, the pomegranate, the honeycomb. 
So when people look at the so-called Star of David and say that's a wicked, evil symbol, or that's the Star of Moloch, now you're saying honeycombs are wicked. So people, they eat honey or snowflakes that the Most High created, or lilies are evil now and pomegranates, because they resemble that same exact symbol, which doesn't make sense. And ultimately, um, from what is believed, there's the original menorah from um, Chronicles. Let me go down to Chronicles. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 15, right? Even the weight for the candlesticks of gold and for the lamps of gold by the weight of every candlestick and for the lamps thereof and for the candlesticks of silver by both for the candlesticks also for the lamps thereof according to the use of every candlestick. So when you get into this chapter, um, this is supposed to be talking about the original menorah. Like, and uh, let me use an image to back that up. Um, the, oldest, the oldest image that can be found is uh, I believe is the Megalodon stone, right? Megalodon stone is a carved stone block unearthed by archaeologists in a Galilean synagogue in Israel dating to before the destruction of the second temple in Jerusalem in the year 70 AD. So this, this is the oldest um, menorah that they found or image of a menorah from the time period around Yahushai, right? 70 AD. Yahushai died in like 33 AD, which was said to believe. But, uh, see a menorah. There's, um, you see, you can see a lily on it. This is like the oldest image they have. Lily is all over it. Sides, top, right? And then when you get into the, um, let me pull up another archaeological image. So basically with the, I believe it's the tribe of Gad. No, it's, hold up. Yeah, this is another image dating back to the 13th century. As they, they call it the Star David. I mean, that looks like a so-called Star David. You can see this. It's basically an artifact. And this is Psalms 51 and 7, right? So this is dealing with the um, the lily, right? As we call it, being pure like a snowflake. Because snow, the snowflake looks like the lily. And it looks like the so-called Star David, which it resembles heavily. Right? So I'm going to read this from the top. Verse 7. Purge me with hopsin, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. So, snow, which is the snowflake, which is the most high created, which was good. When you go back to Genesis 1 and 31, it said that the most high seen that it was good. So, how can this symbol be evil if this symbol is a pure thing? Snow is pure. And if you're wondering where hopsin is, it's like, uh, let, me, let me show you. Hobson is like a small, is a small bushy aromatic plant of mint family, the bitter midi leaves of which are used in cooking and herbal medicine, right? So there, the verse is talking about like being cleansed with it. You know, that's just getting into that. And then you got, you see, you got, all right, Lamentations. Verse 4 and 7. Her Nazarites were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk, and they were more ruddy in the body than rubies after polishing was of Sharpie. So sn snow is being shown as a very pure image. And then on top of that, if the image is an evil image, right, as they say, or is a graven image, that means also Hebrew is also graven. Because when you take apart the lily, the uh, so-called Star of David, it's actually two upside. It's like one. It's basically two triangles. One is like facing upward and one is facing downward. And those are two letters in the Hebrew. And when you put them together, you know, it makes that that lily. So it's like it just doesn't make sense. Uh, let me also dive into the Hebrew real quick. So we're going to go into we're going to use Strong's. We're going to use the strong coordinates, right? Hebrew, you know, H7799. Let me get into that first. Got it. 
So my Hebrew, uh, let me let me just pull up. My Hebrew isn't as good. Strong's H seventy seven ninety nine. Shushan. Shushan. So, so I I just pronounce uh if I'm pronouncing this correctly Shushan. So the outline of it says probably any lily like flower, right? That's dealing with the the Strong's, and then let me dive into. Another one in the strong school age, H. 83, 87. Strong's H. 83, 87. To Anath Shiloh. To Anath Shiloh. And this is basically um, an archaeological flower. You dive into Hebrews 83, 87. Right, this is talk. This links with the uh, two Hebrew words I used beforehand, dealing with the lily and then the archaeological flower, which is a lily, right? And then you got this, which talks about like six petals, you know, six or a lateral number, all that. Strong's H eighty three thirty seven, Shesh, Shesh. And second entry, Shisha, Shisha. And third entry, Sheshi, Sheshi. So that's dealing with the, the Hebrew. 